Hello there techies, my name is Male Vasada and welcome to my channel. Today we'll be talking about a very important topic on the PNP PowerShell that has been a major change rolled out. Let's see what that is. The PNP PowerShell team have announced an update to how the PNP module authenticates to Microsoft 365 tenant. This can have an impact on your PowerShell. Previously, we were able to use the multi-tenant app registration called PNP Management Shell to grant the needed permissions for the scripts. Now this multi-tenant app registration will be deleted on 9th of September 2024. Now at the time of recording this video, this has already been deleted and I had started facing an issue with the PNP PowerShell authentication. And I was struggling with that. I searched for it. I found a solution and this video is dedicatedly for that. To keep going working with the PNP PowerShell, there has been a change. We will take a look at it. How can we register this application again with this change and get going with the PNP PowerShell. Now why is this change? So this change, uh, according to the PNP PowerShell community, is provided to help the customers to improve their security posture by encouraging the use of a single tenant app registrations with on just the scope and permissions which are really needed. So what this enables you is to fine tune what type of permissions that you would like to allow users accessing the PNP PowerShell that gives more control granule level. Similarly, as previously with the multi-tenant app registration, single tenant registration also requires that you are the tenant administrator and have a needed permissions in the Azure site. What kind of issues you might expect? Let's say if you are executing the PNP PowerShell today as of recording this video, you might be facing a message like this. Connecting with Hyper Interactive or even with the get credentials used in the PNP management shell, as of September 9th, 2024, this option is not available. Sometimes you might also face an error like this. Register PNP management shell access, then AAD STS7016, application with the identifier 3135 and so on was not found in the directory and there would be a message which says that either ask your tenant administrator to provide the consent and so on. However, it is not going to help unless you make a change as a new PNP PowerShell registration application. And that is what we are going to look at now. Now to register the PNP application, head over to entra.microsoft.com. That is for the Microsoft Entra Admin Center. You should be logged in as the tenant administrator. Under the applications, find app registrations, click on new registration. Now this is one of the way you register it. We are registering this applications manually. There is also a way to register the application with two ways. One is app only. What that allows is if your PowerShells are running completely on the background without any user interactions, you can even do that. So this video will cover a part where a user can key in the credentials and can work with the PNP PowerShell. This registration can also be done using the PowerShell itself. I'll be providing, I'll be leaving that PowerShell command towards the end of the video. So let's give it a name. Let's give a name as PNP PowerShell. You want to make sure that you select accounts in this organization directory only. A single tenant. Leave all the options as it is. Don't provide the redirect URI. Just click on register. Application created successfully. Now, we need to make a note of this client ID. That is important. So click on copy to clipboard or just copy it and put it somewhere. Now head over to the authentication. Click on add a platform and go for mobile and desktop applications. Here, do not select any of this redirect URIs. Instead, just add HTTP colon colon local host just make sure that it is http and not the https click on configure it will update the application successfully just make sure that all the other settings are as is and don't make any other change now let's click on api permissions you would see that there would be a user dot read default permissions what we want to do is click on three dots remove all permissions 
click on yes remove it will remove the permission now let's go and add a permission so click on add a permission go for a SharePoint click on delegated permissions and select the explicit permission that you would like to grant the user while they are working with PNP PowerShell. You can go for you know, all sites, you can go for you know, my files that is on the OneDrive, you know, you can explicitly mention it into the sites, right? So depending on the permission that you want to grant, you select those permissions. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this because I'll be working completely as a tenant administrator performing various operations on all the sites. And that's the reason I need even the, you know, delete access, edit access, read access, write access, all the access. That's why I'm going for full control. And because of that, I would also be needing the admin consent. If you just go for the other permissions, you may not need the admin consent as it is required here. For now, let's click on add permissions. Let it update the permissions. And because admin consent is required, it is not granted. We need to go ahead and grant the admin consent. So I'm just going to click on that. Click on yes. It will grant the permissions and give us a green tick. So now the permission has been granted. Okay. And that's it. This is all what we need to do. So let's head over to the PowerShell and let's now connect with the SharePoint Online. Now I'm in the Visual Studio Code, I already have imported the PNP PowerShell module. With this, I would recommend you to uninstall the PNP PowerShell and install the fresh PNP PowerShell and then get started. So now let's go for connect PNP online. Let's provide the URL. Okay, and this time we will be using the client ID which we have copied. Okay, and let's go for an interactive login. After we successfully log into the Connect PNP online, let's list down all the lists. Get PNP list. That's it. That will help us to know that we are connected with the SharePoint online successfully using this new method. And we are able to retrieve all the list as well. So let's go and hit run. It will ask the dialog box. Now I am already logged in. That is why it will show me the option. If not, you can log in with the credentials. Click on that or sign in. It will close the dialog box and should successfully connect and return the list of the site. And there you go. You can see we are now successfully able to connect to the site using the new PNP PowerShell registration approach. So as mentioned earlier, these are the PowerShells that you can use to register the applications depending on how you want to register it. The first is creating the app registrations for an interactive login, the one which we saw using UI. And the second is when you would like to register the application as an app only access. So first is when you run the command above that we have mentioned, it will be asked to authenticate with username and password and two factor authentication if set up. After that, a new app will be registered in the enter ID, how we registered it. Now by default, a very limited set of permissions is added, but if you want, you can provide a set of permissions in the command itself, just like how we created the SharePoint applications permission. The other way is to set up it as an app only access. When you run the command above, it will again ask to navigate to shown URL that you mentioned and enter the code that will be displayed there. After that, a new application will be registered in the Entra ID and a certificate will be generated and uploaded to the application. After this, a URL will be shown, which you have to navigate to provide the consent for this application. By default, again, a limited set of permission scope is added. If you want, you can add more permissions to this command set. Do remember to save the certificate because you will need to pass that entire certificate ID when you will be connecting to PNP PowerShell using app only access method. So I hope this example helped you to understand the error that we usually face now because of the change and how to overcome that error, connect with the PNP PowerShell and get going.